fact, man, it finally dropped. The ESPN Netflix The Last Dance, the 1997 Chicago Bulls iconic on the road to the second three-peat. I'm talking three-peat, three-peat, back-to-back. We get to see MJ the GOAT in ways we never seen him. So if anyone knows me, I'm not going to hold you guys up. We're going to jump right into it. We get to see the GOAT MJ and all the behind-the-scenes drama that led up to them winning that last championship in 97. Hey, if you like my content, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. Let's jump right into this. The Last Dance, Episode 1. Episode 1 drops on Monday, Episode 2 on Tuesday, and then next week, 3 on Monday, 4 on Tuesday, and so on and so on until we get to Episode 10 in May. But let's jump right into this. This is Episode 1, The Last Dance. MJ, you the GOAT, man. No one's even close to you. So just starting off from the beginning, they give us a little back they give us a little you know saying a little prelude into what's going to happen entering the 97 98 nba season the chicago bulls have won five championships in seven years but as they sought after their second three-peat the future of the dynasty was in doubt now if anybody knows michael jordan took what 18 months off in between the first three-peat and the second three-peat we got to see space jam we don't know why he really took off but you know saying all kinds of speculation but pretty much there was a lot of doubt going on on will they win this next three-peat and will the Bulls still be intact for the you know saying for the years to come because at this point they just won five championships in seven years it's like dang, we should go another year man so they just about to jump into it and tell us all the drama that's going on with the Chicago Bulls behind the scenes. So right after the little prelude, they just show you Michael Jordan saying, hey, you guys remember when y'all drafted me in 84 and I told y'all we was gonna be winning championships before I left? Well, now we have five and we working on number six. And now they about to just run through all their championships. They went, they ran through the 91 where they beat the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? Then 92, they beat uh Portland. Then 93, you got you got the big hit where they beat Charles, Sir Charles. The one time he made it to the finals, <laughs> he didn't win. He got stopped by who else but the GOAT. And now they just running through it. So that's 93. Jordan takes off. Jordan comes back. Ooh-wee. 96 they win. 97. This is where they, you know saying? This is where they at now. The 97 season. They they winning and it's like. What else are they going to do, man? These, these, this team can't be stopped at all. After the first three-peat, they already crowned, man. Is this the best team ever? And at that point, Michael Jordan skyrocketed to the, the most famous person on, the, on earth. Like, there's no one close to him. Everyone knows who Michael Jordan is. He just three-peated, three finals MVP. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, I was born in the 80s, so I I witnessed this, like, growing up. I'm seven, eight years old. Like, dang, this dude is nice. Now, you know, everybody want to be like Mike. Everybody. He's on Oprah. He's doing everything. All the all the celebrities and all the uh, athletes you see now, Michael Jordan is the reason all that's possible. He took sports to a whole nother level. And the Bulls are running through every single body. And everybody wants Mike. Not only do you want to be like Mike, you want Mike around you. You want something that has the Chicago Bulls name and especially Michael Jordan's name next to it. It's selling out everything, man. The Bulls are bigger than life right at this moment. Hey, and to all you younger people watching, Steve Kerr did play with Michael Jordan. And he was a hell of a shooter. He was the original sniper, but... Going into the preseason, they asked uh, Kerr, "What do you what do you think makes the Bulls so unbeatable and unbeatable and gives you guys a chance to win in this next three P? Oh, we got Michael Jordan. He's different from everybody. There's no one like him. We got Michael Jordan. We got a chance to win it all. Like it's just that simple. Like and they really do. With Michael Jordan on that court, it ain't nothing you can do. So where all the drama came from." All right, they, they've been running. They got Dennis Rodman. They got Scottie Pippen, Kerr. Everybody on the team is pretty much old. Jordan's kind of old, but Jordan's still balling. They all balling. So even the owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, he's like, man, I don't know if we can keep this going. We want to win the sixth championship, but this might be the last year. Everyone's getting old, and they may not be able to perform like they, you know what I'm saying, like they previously were. But as you see now, 
players are getting older and they can still play longer compared to back in the 70s and 80s. It's like, yeah, once you hit about 34, it's like, man, that's it. But people are getting older and they still playing. But that's what everyone wants to know. What, what really are the Bulls going to do if everyone's getting older? Let's, let's make sure we win this last championship before we try to break it up and try to rebuild or anything. Because all we got is Michael Jordan. Like, everyone else we, we might be getting rid of. So with all this going on, Michael Jordan said it himself. I'm hearing all this. Are we going to be able to stay together? Are we getting too old? But like anyone says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Michael Jordan's like, hey, as long as we're winning, keep this thing rolling, man. We'll rebuild when we lose. But if we ain't losing, then why are we, why are we even thinking about rebuilding? Let's keep this thing going. Let's go for six. Let's go for seven. Keep the team together. Michael Jordan just had that competitive bone in his body. Like, that's what he wanted to do is nonstop hooping. Like, that's all Jordan wanted to do is ball. He don't care about nothing else. Let's play this game. Let's win this game. And let's go home. That's it. Let's win the game. And as they breaking down, they're saying if the owner, Jerry, doesn't keep this team together, he has to leave Chicago because there's no way to replace a team that's bringing championships. If they're winning, you got to keep them there. So they got Michael Jordan, the greatest player to ever walk this earth. At that time, there, there was no one better. You guys can compare Kobe, LeBron, older players. But at this point in time, the seven years, the eight years, hey, Jordan was the best thing smoke. Then you got Scottie Pippen, arguably the greatest number two player ever and probably the best two-way player we've seen. Then you got Dennis Rodman, who's led the league in rebounds the last five years. And he knows his role. I'm not a scorer. I get the rebounds. I play the defense. I kick it out. I do what I need to do. There's no way you can replace this big three. This is a, this big three is probably one of the, the greatest we've ever seen. And probably going to be the greatest. It, they're unmatchable, bro. You got to keep this team together, man. And as we know, because we're watching this, as preparations began for the 97-98 season, Jordan and the Bulls granted unprecedented access to a film crew for the entire year. So they knew that this was special. It was a chance to have the first <laughs> three-peat, three-peat. Like, you got to record this. You got to document this. Of course, nowadays, with more cameras and technology phones, they have way more footage, but... They had one camera crew follow the team around for the whole season. So, you know, it was a whole bunch of stuff that was going on that they actually documented. And this this run was amazing, man. I've, I've witnessed it in real life. I'm not no go back and watch it on YouTube. I, I actually seen these games and I watched the series. I wasn't a Bulls fan. I admired Jordan, but I wasn't a Bulls fan. But I've seen this and I know, hey, they, they were the truth. So Jordan pretty much sat down with the team and told him, look, listen, I hear all the noise. Y'all hear all the noise. Let's take everything that they're saying and show them that, hey, we ain't old. We don't need to be broken up. Let's show them this year. Let's get this three-peat and show them that, hey, we can ball. This is the team that y'all need to keep in Chicago. There's no other team. There's nobody you can replace us with. There's no rebuilding. Forget that. We're going to show them this year that this is how we ball and this is how we gonna play. We gonna win us a championship. Michael Jordan told them that at the beginning of the year. That's just that's just Michael Jordan with that heart. Like, he like, hey, y'all do y'all job. I'm gonna lead us to a victory. We gonna get us another ring, man. So where the real tension comes from for the Bulls in that 97, 98 season is what we have here, Jerry Krause, the general manager. So pretty much the owner of the Bulls, he knew Jerry Krause from around Chicago. He was a scout slash kind of a GM for the uh, Chicago White Sox, but he wasn't that good. So he called around. He was asking people about him, and everyone's saying, hey, don't don't deal with Jerry, man. He's not good, man. He can't do anything, man. They've been losing down here. Don't bring him in. But the owner, he knew him. So he's like, man, I'm going to give him a job. You know what I'm saying? We already have the pieces in place. So it's like, all you have to do is just come in here, and if we do rebuild, then bring people in. So he was the sole reason for all the tension. The Bulls are doing good, but he didn't like that. They said he had a thing called the short man syndrome. We see that today. He's short, he didn't grow up with any money or anything. So he wanted to be the center of attention because he'd been bringing in pieces and they've been winning championships. But Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, they're getting all the attention. And for him, he didn't like that. Look at his eye. You can tell he, 
like he didn't want him around, but he's the reason that the Bulls were going through so much tension and stress during this championship run. Like, just just bring in players and chill. You're not the player, man. Let us run this. And this is where it really came from. Michael Jordan, they asked Michael Jordan in a practice leading up to the season, hey, what is going to be you guys' biggest concern about winning this championship? Michael Jordan looked up to the general manager's office. This is where Jerry Krause's office was. Because <sighs> everyone knew he's trying to break up the team and rebuild it. And remember what I just told you about the short man syndrome. So there was an interview that he had. And he told the interviewee, hey, um, players don't win championships. Organizations win championships. That's because he wanted all the attention on him. Like, hey, I put this team together. You guys aren't giving me as much credit as I want. But really what he was doing was taking a shot at the team. Like, if it's not for the front office putting it together, then you players wouldn't do anything. But even, <laughs> even SportsCenter was like, mm, that's crazy. The players are out there playing the game. We've never seen Jerry get out there, post up, and hit a short jump shot because the players win the championship. Yeah, you bring the pieces in, but if the pieces don't, they don't gel, they don't mix, then they ain't going to win nothing, Jerry. Yeah, you brought in players, but they still had to go out there and score those points. <sighs> See? People always messing up stuff. Know your role. Just know your role then things really started heating up. So Jerry got into it with Phil Jackson. It was pretty much like, yeah, Phil, I don't want you, you know what I'm saying, I don't want you coaching here no more. And after they won their championship in 97 and 97, 96, after the fifth, Jordan said, hey, look, straight up, I have a right to choose who I want to play for. And if Phil Jackson isn't the coach, uh, you guys don't want to hear, but I have options. I can go to other teams. I'm not playing for him. anyone besides Phil Jackson. And Jerry Krause didn't like that. So it, it got to the point where Jerry was so mad, he told Phil Jackson, I don't care what the owner tells you, but you're not coaching here next year. And how petty Jerry Krause was, his stepdaughter got married. He invited the whole Bulls organization. The one person he didn't invite was Phil Jackson. So this whole time this was going on, and in the summer, Phil had a, I mean, not Phil, Jerry Crouch, the general manager, had another guy that he wanted to be the coach of the Bulls because he wanted to get rid of Phil Jackson. The crazy thing is he was going fishing with him pretty much like like molding him. Like, hey, all right, you're going to be coaching. This is what, you know what I'm saying, this is what goes on in the organization is this. And it's, it's so sad that Jerry went behind Phil's back and did this because he's the one that gave Phil Jackson the job. There would be no Phil Jackson without Jerry Crouch. So how can you go behind him? You brought him in, he gave you five championships, and now you're talking about, hey, yeah, we signed you for one year, $6 million, this is it. After this, you won't be coaching anymore. And as we all know that Phil no longer coached the Bulls, they ended up going to the Lakers, but dog, six championships, and Jerry, you was acting like that? Man, that's pitiful. And in the interview, they asked Phil Jackson about this, like, hey, okay, we know it's your last year. But uh, what do you think is the reason for Jerry Krause and the reason he's acting like that? And Phil Jackson broke it down and said, people evolve, people change. They're not going to stay who they are. But what he did point out was head coaches, money went up here. General managers probably started here and went like here. So they said, Phil, do you think that's the reason he's not getting paid enough? And Phil Jackson said, I don't want to speculate on that. Because Phil knew it's like, I'm getting more attention than you brought me in, but I'm bigger than you. Like, we're the Bulls, we're bigger than you. But the thing is, you're part of the Bulls organization. Play your role, you're up here with us. Of course, Michael's ahead of all of us, but you're right here with us. You're still going to be known as the GM that brought in all these players and put together six championships. Look at Jerry Crouch. Like, so after all that, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, they started pretty much just making fun of Jerry in his face about him being short. Like, it's crazy. So, leading up to the preseason games in the 97-98 uh, the season, they had a McDonald's championship in Paris. So, they all, the whole Bulls organization, they go over there. And at this point, Jordan is the man. Everybody knows Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan! Michael Jordan! Michael Jordan! Everywhere. And... <laughs> Michael Jordan being Michael Jordan pretty much just like, hey, you know what it is? He got the little beret on, like, he just chilling. It's Michael Jordan being Michael Jordan. And everywhere, they, I'm talking about swarm. 
it's ridiculous. Like everybody loves him. They're getting him on talk shows. Everywhere they go, it's gotta have security. He gotta ride in the bus. As you can see in this little uh, screenshot right here that I have of the episode, everybody's around him. You want Michael Jordan there. They even went as far as to say, Michael Jordan is the closest to God on earth. That's how big he is. And you just hear, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, ah, Michael Jordan. Like, they love Jordan. They love the Bulls. Everyone got on Bulls gear. I don't even know where you could buy Bulls gear from in Paris in, in 97. Like, they're selling that in the store. Where you going to go to, like, a, a sports place? Like, hey, uh, you guys got the Chicago Bulls jersey in that Michael Jordan? It's crazy, man. So as you know, most organizations, until they get a star, they have no history. They're not really good or anything. Whatever happened before them, they were super trash. Which wasn't, which wasn't far different from what the Chicago Bulls were. Before they got Michael Jordan, they were terrible, losing seasons. The, the whole Chicago was divided. So the north side was Chicago Cubs fans. South side was the Chicago White Sox. The Blackhawks, the, the hockey team, they were they had fans all throughout the city. And then the Bulls, they were so unliked and no fans. They had a soccer team come out with them. The, the Chicago Sting, it was like an indoor soccer team or something like that, or a, a minor league, I don't know, trash, but... They didn't have anything until they got Michael Jordan. And you all know the history of Michael Jordan when he was in college, man. He was on another level. So Michael Jordan brought a lot of attention to the Chicago Bulls. One man himself, like, hmm, he was on another level, man. Starting young, he was on another So Michael Jordan decided to go to UNC, University of North Carolina, the Tar Heels, and he played with Dean Smith, one of the the greatest college coaches, if not coaches, ever to coach a game of basketball. Michael Jordan went there as a freshman. You're saying he didn't really know anything. And even James Worthy said it. At that time when he got there, James Worthy was the best person on that team. But he said after about two weeks, <laughs> MJ was the best player on that time. At that point, he wasn't MJ. He was just Mike Jordan. He wasn't Michael Jeffrey Jordan. He was just Mike Jordan. Wasn't MJ. Wasn't Michael Jordan. He was just... <laughs> Mike Jordan, but James Worthy said he he worked harder than everybody. After practice, everyone be sweaty, getting ready to leave. He said Michael Jordan would nudge him. He said, "Hey, get back out here. Let's play one on one. We gotta go." Like James Worthy was like, "Hey man, you know what I'm saying? You a freshman, got all this energy. I'm trying to go out here." But MJ he really stepped up to the plate and was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be the hardest worker out here." And we know the we know the legend of Jordan. We know it. Yeah, he was the hardest worker out there. 1982, they make it to the national championship game against Patrick Ewan in Georgetown. The game is going back and forth, evenly matched up, top two teams in the nation. Oh, man, it comes down to 32 seconds left on the clock. Georgetown 62, North Carolina 61. They call the timeout. They go into the huddle. They draw up a play. The play is for James Worthy. But if James Worthy isn't open, give it to Michael. And it might you take the shot. Mike said he got the green light. When he when he heard that, he got the green light in that huddle. And he like, hey, I'm going to take this shot. So they pass the ball in. Jordan gets it. They swing it around to the right side of the court. Everyone knows that James Worthy is getting this ball. They swing it in there. The defense collapse on James Worthy. They swing it back around to a wide open Michael Jordan, as you can see here. Soon as Mike gets it, in rhythm. Net bottoms wet. They win the championship. Michael Jordan with this iconic shot, his freshman year, wins the championship game for the Tar Heels against Georgetown, who was a powerhouse of that year. They had uh, Patrick Ewing, who went on to be number one the next year after Jordan got drafted. Whew. Something else, bro. Michael Jordan. He said after that game, that gave him the confidence. He went from Mike Jordan to Michael Jordan. And after that, they said his game was never the same. He went to another level. They, between freshman and sophomore year, it was such a huge jump. They've never seen anything like that. He was the best college player that, they, that they've seen besides, you know what I'm saying, back when you had Wilt, you know what I'm saying, still. But 
MJ was a bad man, bro. Bad man. Mike was so good after doing three years there, his junior year, he was like, all right, I'm going to return for my fourth year, try to get another championship. The coach took him to the side, was like, hey, you're, you're too good here, man. You need to take your talents to the next level and be challenged a little bit more. And Mike, before before the press conference, he said, I decided 30 minutes ago, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go to the NBA. Like, I'm gone. Like, I did all I could here in college. I'm going to the NBA. Yeah. The rest was history, man. But Mike said that that game is what what made him take his game to another level. And then his coach pushed him like, hey, I, I did all I could do. You got to go to that next level, man. You got to go up. You here. You got to go here. No one expected Jordan to be that great, but that's what hard work could do for you. As they enter into the NBA draft, the listing is Houston, Portland, Chicago, Dallas. So here's how it played out. The number one pick was Hakeem Olajuwon, a very, very great pick from the University of Houston. The reason they got him is because he was a hometown. Well, he's not from Houston, but he played there in college, and he turned out to be a great pick. Arguably one of the greatest centers to ever play, probably top three or four, maybe top five for sure. And he won them two championships. So, hey, you can't be wrong. You can't be mad at that. Number two was Portland. They ended up getting Sam Bowie from uh from Utah. The reason they got him is because they already had Clyde Drexler, who was an amazing player, but him and Michael Jordan played the same position. So it wouldn't make any sense to get Michael Jordan also and then have two players that play the same position. So they decided, let's get us a big man to match with him. Now, long story short, <laughs> Clyde the Glide went on to Houston and won two championships when Michael Jordan left with Hakeem Olajuwon. So those two, the two players, they paired up well and they won two championships. Who's to say if the Bulls would have beat them or not? But there was rumors that Jordan didn't want to play against Hakeem. Uh, who knows, but they got them two championships. The number three, the Chicago Bulls. And they knew MJ was up. He was the biggest name out there in the draft. And they went ahead and snatched up Michael Jordan. They got Michael Jordan. They brought him into the city. And like you know, a frenzy begun. Like, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. We got we got us a player. Now we got to do his build. We got to work. But we got Michael Jordan. That is a great start. Michael Jordan. Now, MJ Young, 20 years old, turned 21. <sighs> He's coming from college where he does it. You know what I'm saying? It's a clean organization. It's UNC. At that time, they are very prestigious. They still are. They're still a big school. But back then... The drugs and stuff wasn't as much on that campus as him coming to Chicago. So for him, he came to Chicago. They called the Chicago the cocaine circus. Pretty much saying that a lot of the players that use cocaine when they're on the road, they were using cocaine. So MJ knew nothing about this. At this time, he said he didn't drink or anything. But one night, they were in Peoria, Illinois. This is the preseason. And they're all in a hotel. So he's going to look for his teammates. So he's knocking on doors. Doom, 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 doom. He can't find nobody. He gets to a door. And he knocks on it. And he said he can hear pitch. And then Michael said, someone with a deep voice said, who is it? He was like, hey, it's me, MJ. They were like, oh, he's a rookie, let him in. So he comes in and he goes and he says there's like a section. So in this section, it was your lines, coke. Then you got your marijuana and then you got your women. So whatever you wanted was in there. But he'd never been around that. And he knew at that point, he said, hey, if I'm in this room and someone come and raid this, I'm just as guilty as everyone in the room. So Michael Jordan left. And he said after that, he pretty much became a loner. So at that time, Jordan's a loner. He's not really hanging with the team. Hey, he just out there balling. Like, I'm practicing, practicing, practicing. All day, all he did was practice. Go to, uh, wake, wake up in the morning, go to practice. Shoot around after practice, go home, wake up, do it again. Like, it's crazy, man. The dude had a... A different drive than all the other players but they've been losing for so long they don't know nothing else like hey man we're gonna lose we're gonna lose mj said that when he got to the bulls he had to look for whoever was the captain of the team and go for him and he had to go at him with his game because he didn't have a voice he was a rookie so no one was gonna listen to him so he had to show them that he was the best player on his team he said he earned the team's respect in game three of his rookie year. They played against the Milwaukee Bucks. And at that time, Milwaukee was a rival to the Bulls. They lost to the, the Bucks every time they played. And they had the two-time defending defensive player of the year, Cindy Moncrief. And even he, they had him interviewed, and they were like, 
So what did you think about Jordan? He was like, uh, it's a rookie. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be able to hold him. I didn't held the best. I didn't play it against Magic Bird. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah. I didn't held all these people. So I, I'm going to be good. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be straight. But he said when Jordan was out there, he never seen anybody move like that. He was different. So going into the third quarter, the Bulls were down by nine, 85-76. And everyone was like, oh, the game's over with. You know what I'm saying? We'll just get ready for next game. And Jordan was like, the game ain't over, man. We still got a whole quarter left. But they were just so used to losing. That's instilled in their brain. Like, hey, man, it's over with. Let's get ready for the next game. I tell you, Jordan was in the huddle and told him it ain't over with. He had 24 points going into the quarter, and then he just went off. He carried the team, and they ended up winning. I'm talking about and one reverses, everything, dunking on them. And at that point, the head coach was like, yep, hey, yo. That, that's our best player right there. That's the best player right there. MJ is, a, hey, the new captain, the new best player of this team, the new everything. You know what I'm saying? It's about to be called the Chicago Jordan Bulls. Like, that's what it, Jordan was doing right there. He was changing the whole game up. For him. Mike was ripping and running through the NBA, which led him to win NBA Rookie of the Year. They said once Michael got there, games were not even two-thirds, like, tickets sold. They went to everything sold out. They even had standing room. They were selling standing room just so you can get in there and see Michael Jordan. President Obama was living in Chicago, and he said he was poor. He couldn't even get the, the cheap tickets. That's how poor he was, but everyone wanted to see Michael Jordan. If you were in Chicago, if you were anywhere in the United States, you wanted to see Michael Jordan play when he came to your city. But if you were in Chicago, if you didn't get them tickets early, you weren't going to see them. You wasn't. mm, -mm. Hey, go ahead and nip that in the bud. Like, you're not. They were asking kids, what would you rather get? Christmas presents? And they were like, no, nah, we'd rather get tickets to see Michael Jordan play than get Christmas presents. This is how big Michael Jordan was. And he went on to win Rookie of the Year. No one expected when he got drafted to be this good. This guy's a whole nother level. Magic, Bird, everyone's looking at him like, this is it. This is it right here. This is the Nexus. This is the next thing after we phase out. This is so leading up to the to the championship game they had, the McDonald's championship game that they had in Paris, you know, Donald Sterling flew over. I mean not Donald Sterling, <laughs> David Sterling flew over. And you know what I'm saying, him and Mike it became close at this time. You know, this this is present in the 97-98, the preseason game. So, you know, you just check it in on the, the NBA team. Because at this point, no one has ever lost in this game. And um, an American team has never lost in this. So, you know, he's just coming over there. He's a commission. He got to show up to this. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? It's just another game for them. Like, MJ, like, man, we can go ahead and knock this out. They ain't a real championship or nothing. But, hey, we're going to get it. So, a couple of the players, you know, the rookies and stuff, this is their first time winning. And they like, hey, we playing with MJ. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, before the first game of the 97-98 season, of course, it's the ring ceremony. They bring out the Chicago Bulls. They start announcing people. The GM comes out, Jerry, and you hear the crowd. Boo! He probably got, like, three claps. Like, ah, yeah, whatever. You breaking up the team. But then they announce Phil Jackson. The crowd goes crazy. They cut the lights, and they start bringing out the Bulls. Woo! Steve Kerr, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen. The crowd's going crazy. And now... Introducing, if you remember on Space Jam, how they brought out Michael Jordan, that's pretty much exactly how they brought him out for this this five ring ceremony. Like they brought him out, and the crowd goes crazy, man. The Chicago Bulls, man. This, hey, they on the road for that second three P, man. And it's gonna be a bumpy one, but they gonna get it done, man. We already know how the ending is, but we don't know what happened in between. <laughs> What's the real story? So, hey. That's episode one right there, the 10 part series. All right, y'all, so that's episode one of this 10 part series. Like I say, episode one is dropping on Monday and then episode two on Tuesday. But I need you to comment below, what overall do you think of the whole bull situation? Is Jerry the sole reason that the Bulls didn't go on to a, you know what I'm saying, to, to win four, the back to back to back to back? like? Or do you just think they were getting too old? Comment below what you think is going to happen. I mean, not what you think is going to happen, because we know it's going to happen. Comment below what you think was the sole reason. Is it because Jerry had the short complex? What all did you think about this, this episode? But hey, comment below, and thank you for watching. This is episode one of the 10-part series. 
we're gonna go ahead and jump into episode two tomorrow same time we're gonna drop them at 12 noon eastern every day we drop them so hey if you like my content hey please subscribe to the channel turn on your notifications so you can get something every time i upload and if you can do me a solid follow me on all my social media moe dotj i'm most active on instagram hey thank you for watching and we'll be back for episode two hey i'm out thanks for watching Jimmy on the beat, boy.